Today I'm going to discuss globalization, Americanization and McDonaldization by George Ritzer. This is a very important and interesting topic. We can relate to it very well, especially at the time of lockdown because we all have experienced some mutual feelings during the lockdown. Apart from the feeling of isolation and maybe sympathy for others, there are some feelings that we all mutually felt. One, missing our favorite food from our favorite food joint. Second, can be shopping, online shopping or shopping for something that is not available in your uh, area per se. So, we are going to understand why these mutual wishes or temptations they were there among the people who are you know uh, dispersely ro uh, located who are maybe not even in contact with each other and even then more and more or less we all have had the same wishes so the first concept that i'm going to start with is americanization what is Americanization? So Americanization is when the culture, the values, the practices that are there in America that is being lauded, that is being appreciated and copied perhaps and it influences people living in other countries as well. This kind of culture is also presented as superior than other cultures. We can see the impact of America or Americanization in various countries. For example, our dressing sense. Why do we often think wearing jeans is better than wearing our traditional clothes? Or why is it so normal to wear Western clothes and wearing traditional clothes only on, say, ethnic day or waiting for some occasion? So there are these nuances, these small influences that we often ignore, but the influence of America, the influence of its values and practices is far more uh, stronger than we think that it is. So this is what is Americanization. Now, we know that there are various food chains that are run by American brands, not just food chains, even clothing chains and various other say food products or something like that which are American products, the roots are American and they are exported to the rest of the world and probably labeled as best quality, super quality or American brand, America's favorite and something like that. So what does it do? When these are exported, when they reach far away places, they determine and they, you know, they have made this subconscious mind, we in our subconscious mind, we determine that, yes, this is what I want. I want what is best in America because that is best, that is superior from what I am getting in my country. So, it changes, it influences my choices my habits, my uh, preference of clothing and what happens in return? Those companies, they earn profit from all over the world, not just America, from all over the world. Example can be maybe using electric brushes, maybe using some kind of food that is famous there and not perhaps known here. Example can be many actually. You know, we often tend to ignore the vegetables that are grown in our local area and we go after the vegetables or perhaps oils and many other things that are marketed by Americans or American brands. Examples can be cooking in olive oil or wearing clothes, wearing the denim that is manufactured there, using cosmetics that are manufactured there because they are advertised and they are influencing our lives in a way that we cannot even imagine. Now, going with the same concept, Ritzer has talked about McDonaldization. So what is McDonaldization? The McDonaldization of Society, his book that was published in 1993, has talked about new means of consumption. So it is very evident that we are becoming a consumer-based society. We, our consumption is exceeding at a very fast rate, very swiftly. 
and his work was influenced by Weber's work of rationality. But Ritzer has talked about the modern world's rationality or the formal rationality where we all are rational beings. This is right. We all try to make the best decision. We try to take the, uh, you know, pick the best choice, best option, best alternates. But what happens is the Americanization has left such an indelible imprint in our minds. We cannot think beyond it. So the McDonaldization process, it has four dimensions. That is efficiency, predictability, quantity over quality and substitution of humans with machines or technology. An example can be fast food. So let us understand these dimensions by putting it in the example of McDonald's itself. So, if you have visited your local restaurants, you always feel that the taste keeps on changing. Perhaps the quantity also keeps on changing. You cannot always predict the taste. If you are ordering something today, it might taste very different from what you order tomorrow. And talking about efficiency. An example of efficiency is drive through in McDonald's. We all have seen and probably been to as well the drive throughs that are there in various um, you know, food chains like McDonald's and Burger King and many more. So what they do is they are increasing their efficiency. In a very short period of time, they are delivering more and more of the food that they have produced. So they are increasing their profits as well. Now there is always this predictability as well. You always know that the burger that you ate yesterday or one year ago, it is going to taste the same today. There are no surprises. Quantity over quality. Now they are very much interested in producing and selling large quantities of food and they do not care if the food is stale or something. What they really care about is the profits that are associated with the selling of those foods. Last is substituting humans with machines or controls. Now the thing is they have the same recipe that they call as uh, secret spices and secret ingredients. And the workers, what they have to do is they just have to assemble it together. The recipe is already there. There is no creativity. There are perhaps not even a human touch. The machines assemble the food together and they give it to you. So there is a demystification or dehumanization of the dining experience. What we uh, you know, see in the food channels probably when we watch the food channels, YouTube channels or when we even see our mothers or grandmothers cooking in the kitchen, the whole experience of cooking is altogether a different scene and when we eat that kind of food, the experience is totally something different. But it is not the case with McDonaldization where they are only focused on selling it quick and easy. So this concept is very evident in the terms of credit cards when we talk to uh, now in the modern world where one on the one hand McDonald's is giving fast food, the banks are giving fast money, easy loans, pre-approved cards, they even uh, you know get delivered at your home, you do not even need to visit the branch. So what does it do? It increases our consumption because we know that we have to pay if I have a credit card and I know that there is a limit of say uh, 1 lakh and I have to pay it by the end of the month. It gives me a lot of time. So what does it do? It tells me that yes, I have a lot more uh, you know, in my bank, I can spend even more and my consumption increases. What happens as a result? It leads to large debts. And the same process that happened in case of McDonaldization, where there was dehumanization, the same thing happens today. When you call the customer service, you know they have the same line that they will tell you. There is no emotional, uh, there is no involvement of emotions or anything like that. They know that they just have to go by those 5-10 lines that are given by the company and they talk to you like there are robots. So this robotic experience is what it, uh, you know, dehumanizes the whole experience. Now coming to globalization as discussed by Ritzer. So a little introduction, what is actually globalization? So globalization is the share of culture, of products, of money, and it goes beyond borders with the help of what? Trade, 
technology, rapid communication, technology and many more things. So what does it actually do? It links economies and it is also a social process. How? Because there is always an exchange of knowledge, culture, traditions, because you know there is tourism, there is so many things to explore and to know about. Also there is a kind of economic interdependence due to which globalization is actually a very good phenomena because while you are sitting at your home with a click of just one finger you can order anything from anywhere in the world and it gives you a lot of options at very competitive prices and whatnot. So globalization is actually the integration and interdependence of societies and also of cultures and it you know involves various practices and relations where many organizations are also there. So this is what is globalization in a nutshell. I've given the definition that is given by Ritzer. You can read it. Now globalization is also consumption of vast quantities. Why? Because when you're getting things at competitive prices and so many options, your consumption obviously it increases. Your consumption rapidly increases. Now Ritzer has talked about third cultures in his book Sociological Theory but this concept was given by Apadurai in 1990. So they transcend boundaries and these third cultures which are different from what is there in globalization. So these cultures are first is Financecape, Ethnoscape and the last is Technospace. So what is this Financecape? Financecape is nothing but trade you know in stocks and bonds and see bitcoins and there can be some other examples like same which help in these trades transceding boundaries in blinding at a very blinding speed it is it actually just takes seconds when the stock market is going up and down it just takes seconds to you know invest and make a good deal or lose a lot of money second is ethnoscape ethnoscape is where there is a lot of tourism and there are you know many chains of hotels and different kinds of theme parks and whatnot so what they do they lure you to you know travel across the borders and just go and see that one thing an example can be disney amusement parks that are there the theme parks that are there people are crazy about it so they are made in a way they are created in a way to influence people and to attract them third is uh, techno space that is the technologies that are employed and example can be internet which lets you connect from uh, one place to another in a you know the in the blink of an eye so in a nutshell we can say that mcdonaldization uh, reflects americanization and also when we talk about globalization there is some evidence of americanization present in globalization as well because most of the companies most of the chains that are there their roots are in america only so the profits that are going they are going to america itself uh, so I hope you got the lecture. In the last slide I've added some books that are written by Ritzer. You can please take a look at that. Let us wind up this session by discussing some questions. Question number first, who described the phenomena of globalization in today's world as globalization of nothing? So the answer is George Ritzer. Now let me explain this. When I say globalization of nothing, I do not mean that Ritzer said that globalization is nothing. No, he did not say that. He said that there is a relationship between globalization and nothing and they are best suited for each other. Why? The thing is, they vary together, they change together. Where globalization, what does it do? It, you know, spreads this nothingness throughout the world. And we, uh, you know, change from something to nothing. Because an example can be when you have, say, 20 clothes in your wardrobe and you always keep complaining. Uh, that I have nothing to wear. So what is this? This is nothingness. We always feel that we need more and more. But in uh, older times, in ancient times, even two pairs of clothing were enough. Why? Because uh, that had some kind of meaning. But today when we have become uh, so consumption oriented, everything, even when we have say three cars, we feel like something is missing. So there is this feeling of nothingness. Moving to the second question, 
Sarah travels from her home in New Jersey to a vacation condo in New Mexico and is relieved to find that she can enjoy the same juicy burger at her favorite hamburger chain so far away from home. Which concept of McDonaldization is at work? So the answer will be B, predictability, because she already knows that the taste of the burger that she's going to order is the same as she ordered at her hometown. So there is the uh, feature of predictability in this concept of McDonaldization.